here and now. Here we are with Steve Struggle. Good morning. In the How USA. Are you? Uh, very well. I'm uh, really uh, very pleased to hear this week that uh, Chuck Schumer. Or is that how you pronounce his name? That's fine. He's, he's a jerk and an asshole. Whatever you, how you pronounce his name is fine with me. Okay, Chuck Sh Schumer or Schumacher. Or, and anyway, you know, his last name, you know, means in Hebrew, um, guardian. So now he's promoting himself as the guardian of uh, Israel because uh, he considers it Netanyahu and its government, you know, is uh, destroying uh, the Zionist project. So he's come along to save it. And he's announced, you know, that Netanyahu should step down and there should be an election, which is a very popular demand, you know, within uh, the Israeli public, public as well. And it uh, is motivated, you know, and he enunciates, you know, that uh, the Netanyahu government, you know, is not uh, doing well for either, you know, the United States or for the Zionist state, and is discrediting it. And um, he refers specifically to the uh, to a, a recognition of a Palestine state, which the Netanyahu uh, government has refused to consider, but which is now the official policy of the United States government. So. That's, you know, a big break, you know, like the Zionist camp is, you know, cracking up. And uh, I was surprised to hear that uh, this came from, you know, the leading, you know, uh, Democratic Party representative in uh, in, in U.S. government. And, and, you know, like, uh, what are the Zionists going to say? You know, like, they have nothing left to say as far as, you know, U.S. Uh, civil society and Jewish uh, Americans are concerned. Big thing, big news. Well, um, I want to point out that Schumer is a uh, leading senator, and his statements clearly, in my view, don't just represent him. I think that since my position is that the United States is leading the attack on the Palestinians, through the Israelis, that there has been a shift in the a shift in policy is now underway within the Biden administration. Now I can be wrong about that because you know it's just me out here making an opinion of what I see, but Schumer doesn't make these statements on his own, and so far Biden has not countered Schumer. Nor has nor has uh, this, the um, Blinken and the Blinken U.S. State Department head, nor the U.S. Um, Vice President Kamala Harris. So we can assume for now this is the new policy position of the U.S. imperialists that mm -hmm. their mission in the Middle East is not being helped by Netanyahu, and that they now want him gone. Mm -hmm. um, it is a sovereign state. They can't necessarily force him out of the United What I'm saying is very, it is, it is interesting that I don't feel that Schumer makes these statements out of the blue. He's a leading U.S. senator. He's part of the, what I would consider Biden's cabinet, kitchen cabinet. Hmm. And as such, what he said, in my view, had to been was not strongly disapproved of by Biden, nor by Anthony Blinken, nor by Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. So for him to make such a statement, and for the U.S. imperialist government to not disagree with him openly, because he since he made the statement openly, they'd have to disagree with him openly, means that a signal has been sent to Netanyahu officially and unofficially that the U.S. interest in controlling the Middle East is being seriously hampered by your by your actions. Now, to make to make back that up a little bit, the United States has to drop humanitarian aid from the ground. That shows you that something's wrong. Since the U.S. runs the show and Israel wants to run the show. And they can't drop it, bring its aid in through the through through, through the truck crossings mm -hmm. at Rafa. Then clearly something's going on here. Mm -hmm. the, the Israelis have not stopped the demonstrations at the Egyptian border 
crossing where settlers, Zionists, are allowed to party and block humanitarian aid. Mm. So they have to now drop the aid through the air. Mm. The fact they even have to the fact they even have to bring the aid show that there, there's an issue because the imperialists would prefer, I think, that 30,000 Palestinians not be dead. That that doesn't help their image at all. Mm. Yeah. But since they don't directly control the Israeli, the Israeli army is not part of the United States Army, they really they, they're not gonna they're not gonna take them on militarily. But I think it's the time has come to pro protest and also deaths on the ground that you know they have to kind of this isn't working for us. That's how they see it. Mm. And they mm. have to now do damage control, even though they have yet to allow a ceasefire vote at the UN to go through. Mm. So while they want Nen Netanyahu to step down, they're still hypocrites because they have never allowed a humanitarian a ceasefire resolution to be, resolution to be passed in the United Nations. So mm. they, talk out, they talk out both sides of their mouth as all devils and criminals and double dealers do. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's 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 how I see it. Yes, yes, I I see it. You know, like uh, because uh, you know they have to do something because they were losing the support of their democratic base, democratic right. party base. Yes, yes, they, they, they really the are. Youth, they really youth, are. Even they young really Jewish are. people and Muslims really and Arabs. Yeah. You know, like yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, there, I mean, there there is an election coming up, and all the legal barriers for Trump to run have been dropped. So unless something comes up, he's going to be running against Biden, hmm. and they need to. I mean, this is this is the the, the 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 control of the government, the money, the infrastructure is important. They just don't throw it away, throw it to the wind without a fight. They're not going to do that. Hmm. So there's some part of their fight has to be to tell Netanyahu, dude, we back you as much as we can. This is a mess with our stuff here. You have to go. Now, Netanyahu is not going to go anywhere, in my opinion. He's not going to mm -hmm. step down. And that's mm -hmm. my view. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. But they have to come out and say, this is this no longer represents what we, the Democratic Party, who controls the government apparatus, wants to have happen in Israel, even though they still haven't voted to allow a ceasefire. So when that happens, if that were to happen, then we see a major policy change. That has to happen. It has to happen. That's how I see it. Yeah, I think that the uh, the reason why uh, Chuck Sch Schumer, you know, evidently has come out with such a statement at this time, is because of American uh, American politics, American based politics. You know, he knows that uh, they're going to. This is the the major, the first issue of the election campaign of the presidential election campaign, and Biden is losing out. So. They have yes, to recuperate. They're forced to make such a statement. I don't think it is so right. much voluntary, you know, as as it is in a, a forced uh, statement in order to please the American electorate, you know, that they are relying upon, you know, in order to win the election. And now they're realizing that they're not going to win the election if they continue to be, you know, like uncritical supporters of Netanyahu. As right. far as Netanyahu is concerned, you know, you know, the war is popular, you know, amongst the Israeli, you know, public so far. Right now, he himself, you know, may not be as popular as as his war is. <sighs> it's not even a war; it's you know, the genocidal campaign against the Palestinians right. in the Gaza. So right. you know, he can continue on, you know, because it's not a threat to his uh, to his kingdom there. So, okay, so, okay, so that puts it into perspective. But nonetheless, this is big stuff, you know, because it's the older generation of the Jewish American public that are going to be affected. The whole, in Canada too, you know, the Jewish public, you know, here is going to hear this. And they're going to say, oh, well, maybe, you know, like we've been led around, you know, by Netanyahu to believe that, you know, we have to support whatever they do in order to, you know, uh, maintain the credibility of the uh, Zionist state. Okay, now they realize, you know, that this is not the current agenda that the agenda has been changed. It's been changed by Chuck Schumer. And I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what the reaction is, you know, on Sunday. <clears throat> you know, like last Sunday, you know, the, the fact that Aaron Bushnell, you know, had kill, killed himself in order to protest 
against the genocide in Gaza, you know, that seemed to have, you know, like next to nothing of an effect upon the Jewish public here in Montreal. But Chuck Schumer, you know, like this is going to, you know, I just have to sort of say the name, you know, to anybody, you know, that comes up to me and starts yelling at me. <laughs> That'll say a lot, you know. Well, like yeah, this. I mean, this, this, I, I just want to say to all, 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 all the Zionist supporters out here, your behavior in public is despicable. Mm -hmm. You're bullies. Mm -hmm. You come up in the public, public, public discourse. Yelling at Dr. Dr. Weisfeld as if he's some bum, some mm -hmm. disrespectful person. Mm -hmm. This man has done more to promote the cause of humanitarian than any of you combined, of uh, humanism, mm -hmm. and, and promoting the rights of the Jewish people internationally. This is despicable. Your behavior is that of a child who needs a good spanking and some lessons of how to behave in public. Get your act together. This is this is not acceptable. And mm -hmm. I want to say as a member of, of uh, the international community, shame on you. When you come in public and uh, want to assault people and yell at them and use profanities against you, you do more to disgrace your, you do as much disgrace your cause as your army does mm -hmm. in Palestine. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah, that's very indicative, you know, how they treat me. And yes. uh, I gave uh, the last uh, Zionist who attacked the banner, you know, I gave him more than a spanking. I gave him a good jab <laughs> to the thigh, you know, with my bamboo pole that was holding up the side of the banner. No doubt about it. And I told him, back off. And then he wanted, yes. he wanted me to come in and, and fight him. You know, he's challenging me to a fight, you know, as if it was some sort of a macho affair going on there. You know, right, I told him, right, right. just back off, you know. And then he hung around. And then another guy, you know, like who was a yeshiva student, you know, in, in the Zionist state, whose uh, roof was hit by shrapnel from the Iron Dome and, uh, you know, Hamas uh, mortar, it's not even a rocket, you know, like he, he and, 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 the, and the guy who had attacked the banner in the first place, you know, comes along, stands, you know, beside him, you know, I tell him to back up a bit, they back up a bit, and then they continue talking to me. But the guy who had attacked the banner before, all of a sudden he turns into a rational human being and is trying to convince me that I'm wrong, <laughs> you know? Well, they are you know. so, so deluded to think that they can get away with what they, you know, think is, you know, right of self-determination. And they call it a well, Jewish right of self-determination. That's how they define Zionism, which is a joke. <laughs> but, but Abraham, the thing about it is they have been getting away with it for decades. And yeah. it's only now, I think only now, maybe sometime in the 70s, it may have been different, but only now. Is there a concerted international movement of exposure based on the internet and the ability to see the crimes they're carrying out, to see the dead babies, not some myth of a baby that they say Hamas killed? No, an actual child murdered because they're Palestinians and you want to kill them. This is what has turned it around. The, the international community, see, nobody is going to wage, an unfortunately or unfortunately, no government is going to form a coalition to take on Israel and destroy it or harm it militarily. It can be done very quickly and easily, but no one's going to do it, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's bad that it's not going to. And whether that will be good or bad is, is up to debate. But now with the use of the internet and demonstrations and protests and, set, and um, um, boycott the Bestman campaigns, Israel's now, Israel and the United States have been put on the hot seat. They're being, when the, top, when the, 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 the light is now shining on the darkness. What has been done in the darkness is now brought to light. And that's what's hurt them. And they don't want to realize, they realize they're hurt and they, they lash out. Like all no-gooders do when they're exposed, they lash out and make these unprovoked attacks and they're being exposed. So they're exposed now, and they want, and they they throw out some good words: anti-Semitism, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. That's because they have nothing to stand on except their rhetoric. Yeah, yeah. Their, their 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 legitimacy in the eyes of some has now come. It has now been erased, and that's a good thing. Yeah, we've made a breakthrough into the Jewish community in Montreal. You know, our vigil here 
even though I'm the only member, you know, who's willing to stand out there and endure the abuse and the threats and the attacks, <laughs> well, you know, uh, nonetheless, they have to listen. And they realize that they have to come and sort of try to counter me by trying to convince me, you know, not to appear there anymore. You know, I even got a call from one Zionist who said that the injunction made against independent Jewish voices, which is an, uh, an assimilated uh, group of uh, Jewish uh, Marxists, you know, who decided they finally had to sort of, you know, uncover their cover and uh, and announce that they are Jewish in order to oppose Zionism uh, while being financed by United Church. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, they've just been banned from the uh, demonstration area there, you know, because they did come there, you know, with the Palestinian youth movement and, and, and made a demonstration that was, you know, harassment, you know, threatening. And one jerk, you know, even made a Hitler salute, you know. So the Zionists, of course, got an injunction. Okay, so now they're banned from coming there. And I had to prove, you know, to them last Sunday that I was not, you know, from the independent Jewish voices in order to maintain the vigil there. So our way of dealing and educating and informing the Jewish community is the complete opposite of what, you know, the the uh, many, you know, Palestinian solidarity organizations are doing, in which they uh, are blaming the Jewish community for what is happening in, in, in Gaza, as if the Jewish community had some sort of, you know, say in the matter, you know, like, whereas in reality, you know, like Jewish community in the diaspora, you know, in Canada, the United States, you know, Argentina, everywhere, we don't have a vote for the Israel elections. That's true. <laughs> we don't have any vote, you know, like, we're just, you know, being led around by the nose, you know, by, you know, this, uh, you know, Zionist administration there, which claims, you know, that it's a, you know, a Jewish state, which it isn't, because the majority of the Jewish people don't even live there, the majority of the Jewish people don't even have a vote there. You know, so there's no way to blame the Jewish community in and of itself, although Can many you? Jewish people are, are you know, like indoctrinated. So the thing to do is to undoctrinate them, not to blame them for what's happening there. Can you go into that a little more detail? Because I think that you raised something that has really been discussed. Yeah. Um, for example, if say you are in the Russian diaspora and you are not Russian citizen, you can't vote in the election that's going on now in Russia. You have to yeah. be a citizen of Russia no, to vote yeah, in the election. Yeah. So let's, 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 can you explain that the, that the real political, I mean, political legal relationship between Jewish people in, in the diaspora and Israel as far as the way the government operates? Yeah, well, Israeli citizens, you know, who leave Israel because they can't take it anymore and go to California, well, they can vote. You know, they go to the uh, consulate or embassy and they vote because they're citizens. But Jewish people, who are a majority, like, you know, there's 7.2 million Jewish Israelis, okay? But there's 7.4 Jewish Americans. Now you add on the Canadians, you know, uh, nearly half a million, and the, the, the Jewish, uh, uh, you know, diaspora in, in South America, and in Europe, in Berlin in particular. Well, you know, like, you're talking about a, a, a significant majority of the Jewish people uh, who do not have Israeli citizenship, do not vote in Israel's elections, and are not responsible for what the Israel government is doing or saying. Now, okay. They, but so many people think that all Jewish people are responsible for what is happening in Gaza, that this one guy, you know, the film director who won the Oscar, you know, gets up and says that he is refusing his Jewishness. He starts off with that. You know, because he thinks that's the way to do it, you know, like that you have to sort of refuse being Jewish if you are going to be anti-Zionist, which is a Zionist argument. So he's adopted a Zionist argument to be anti-Zionist, you know, like the guy is confused, really confused. No way. You know, our approach, the Jewish Bundes approach is that we are speaking in the name of the Jewish people against Zionism. And we are leading the Jewish people away from Zionism together with Natura Karta. And uh, this is a very important issue, a very important matter, because even Naomi Klein, you know, just wrote an article, you know, supporting the guy's speech, you know, even making excuses for his statement that he's refusing his Jewishness, as if he didn't really mean it. Well, okay, maybe he didn't really mean it, you know, but he said it, and the Zionists are going to use it against us. And that's why we have to dissociate ourselves from any such statement. Well, I think this is a very interesting point you're making, because 
the nuances of a the nuance the nuances of campaigns and movements are often not addressed. Nuances of a struggle for political independence, for a new state, for whatever the campaign's about are usually not addressed in the mass media. There's mm -hmm. a, something is just said and the move in, in the news cycle goes on. So thank you for making that clear that the Jewish people internationally in the diaspora who are not citizens of Israel, basically in the real world, and in the, we're talking about the real world of voting, citizenship, impact on what your government does are kind of out of the loop. Yeah, there's another there's another nuance, you know, that we have to address in order to uh, to refine the opposition to uh, the Zionist state and its genocidal campaign in Gaza, and that is that is that uh, you know uh, even you know the Biden administration says that they're calling for a two state solution. Okay, now. The uh, Palestinian Solidarity Movement, of course, says, you know, that the two-state solution is not a solution, you know, because the Zionist state is still going to be there and they're still going to be, you know, doing what they're doing. They're still going to be, you know, like stealing parcels of land, you know, um, uh, year by year, uh, day by day, you know, uh, by the uh, squatters, as I call them, in the illegal uh, colonies in the West Bank. So, I know, like... The, you know, they may be calling for a two-state solution, but they're not calling for the removal of these uh, of these uh, squatters and the removal of the colonies. Okay, so, you know, it's a disingenuous uh, call that they're making for two-state solutions because, one, it's not a solution. However, the call for the recognition of a state of Palestine is not an, uh, uh, a, a you know, is not a, uh, a capitulation to Zionism at all. One has to call for recognition of the state of Palestine because it ha must have a vote in the United Nations General Assembly. Right now, it is just an observer uh, state without a vote. And the fact that the Zionists have a state that is recognized by the United Nations General Assembly is a problem. The thing to do now, uh, with the upcoming recommendation of the International Court of Justice, on the genocide and the International Court of Justice upcoming de decision on the occupation of the West Bank must be that Israel should be suspended or expelled from the United Nations General Assembly and the Palestine state should be recognized. Reverse the whole balance of forces in terms of you know diplomacy and then go from there with further negotiations to force Israel to give up its stranglehold on Palestinian people. I think that it's not unprincipled to call for the recognition of the state of Palestine. And this is what we should be doing rather than, you know, mouthing, uh, you know, our, our discontent, you know, with the wording of the two state solution that leads us nowhere. And just to, you know, discredit, you know, what a little um, progress the Palestinian struggle has been able to make diplomatically. So I call for the recognition of the state of Palestine and for the expulsion of the Zionist state from the United Nations General Assembly. Well, I um, I would support, I think that it's very viable to demand the expulsion of Israel. And the reason I made that statement is as as, as that's observer, there's no lines that they have, there's no lines that there's that they are afraid to cross when it comes to murdering people around the world, carrying out terrorism against the Palestinians. Call, uh, describing them as human animals and carrying out campaigns as such. This has gone on since they've occupied the territory, and it's time to it's time for this to end. So I think that ending their ending their presence in the United Nations, as Taiwan has is not in the United Nations. People don't know that. No, they're not. Oh, the yeah. Republic of China is in the United Nations, not Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So since they are out, Taiwan is out. Why can't Israel be out? Why not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. this why why can't they be out? I mean, there has to be some punishment, some consequence for what they have done, yeah. what they what they and what they are doing. Yeah. What they are doing is an affront to humanity, yeah. and no government. Eh, my mom almost said that. If you carry out acts like this with with impunity, 
Nothing will stop you. This would be a good, uh, this would be a good, what they call object lesson hmm. for criminal governments around the world, including, including the United States, which, 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 is, which is the, which is the godfather of the criminal governments of the world, that hmm. there can be a consequence for your, for your actions. Hmm. So why not kick them out? It's been gone, it's been gone a long time ago. And I think we should endorse your campaign, your, your ideas for removal of Israel from the United Nations and the full recognition of Palestine from from a from observer to a member of 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 the of the General Assembly. Why not? Mm-hmm. Why not do that? Yeah. Sounds good yeah. to me. Yeah, and it's feasible, you know, with the upcoming, you know, decision of the International Court of Justice, which is going to make it legally legally necessary, actually, you know, because the United Nations General Assembly asked the International Court of Justice for an opinion, an advisory opinion on what to do with uh, with the Zionist state and with the Palestinians. Okay, now the recommendation is going to be, you know, that uh, genocide stops, that the occupation stops. Okay, Israel is going to refuse. So the right. next logical step to implement the decision of the International Court of Justice is to expel it or suspend it, you know, from the you know, right. General Assembly. Okay, I agree. There has to be back. some. There has to be some measure of response from the United Nations if it's going to maintain its veneer of being a viable organization hmm. to. A group to an, to a member of of the group, a nation that simply ignores its 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 uh, opinions. And if you look at what Israel's done since the South African government's initiative through the ICJ, Israel has ignored it. Hmm. Yeah, they have ignored they have ignored what the UN said to do. Yes, they have. Hmm. There's no way anybody who has an objective lens looking at the Israel's government and military's actions in Gaza can say that that the that they have that they have um complied with anything the ICJ has said. Yeah. So I think you I think your argument has sufficient validity to be to be considered by those of us who support the right of who support the Palestinian resistance and those who support the Palestine's right to exist. We should endorse your camp, your idea, and, and make it part of our movement for, for for liberation of Palestine. Yeah, and this would be the way to break down the mentality of the um, Israeli Jewish public, which uh, seems to think that they're, they're they're under the threat of genocide and that they have no other choice but to commit genocide against Palestinians. Right now, this is the general consensus, you know, in the Jewish Israeli public. Now, for Israel to be expelled or suspended from the General Assembly. That would wake them up, you know, that would remove the blinders that they're operating under. And they would begin to see how the world views them because they don't know, they don't care. And they, uh, you know, blind themselves voluntarily, you know, as to what, you know, public opinion is in the world. Now, the next step after that would be to remove the veto of the United States and the Security Council. And it seems that the only way to do that is by basically abolishing the Security Council. And setting up a new body, which be like an administration council of some sort, but without the the veto over the general assembly, because the general assembly has to be supreme. Otherwise, you know, United Nations, you know, will collapse. Wow, that's that's um, that would be quite quite revolutionary. Because right now, the the the, the veto power of the world quote unquote world leaders can make the UN General Assembly's actions mute. And um, the body should control what occurs, not necessarily the leadership. Mm-hmm. And the the, the, you know, the the Security Council could be considered the leadership, even though it's really not the leadership, but it could be considered such. Mm-hmm. In in that it can veto what is proposed or passed. What is passed by the General Assembly, that is proposed. It mm-hmm. can veto what has been passed by the General Assembly. Yeah. It can veto it. So in many ways, what you're saying is the entire structure, an entire restructuring of the UN need, needs to occur to allow for essentially a multipolar world. Yeah. At this point, the big, the major power can't just they, they can do what they want, be to what they want. Okay, well we be to it, goodbye. No, yeah. that's that doesn't work anymore. Yeah. That, that, that's that's another that's another excellent suggestion that our listeners should begin to incorporate in, into their conversations among um, broad masses of people and activists 
regarding what's really occurring in, in internationally relating to the uh, West, West, West Asia or the Middle East and what can be done about it. Thank yeah. you. Good idea. Yeah. 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 Any Zionists, you know, that now soft, you know, we can just say, we're going to expel you from the United Nations General Assembly because you don't listen to us, you know, and it's going to be credible. Now, um, there is another mechanism, you know, in the United Nations General Assembly, which hasn't been implemented yet. And this is the fault of the General Assembly. There's something wrong there, you know, because there is a, a, a clause in this charter, which allows for the General Assembly to overrule a, a Security Council veto by a two thirds absolute majority, in, taking into consideration the abstentions as well. And I think that there is such an absolute majority that would support uh, um, a Palestinian motion. Once Palestine, you know, is recognized as a full voting member, they can move a motion to overrule the Security Council veto of the United States and call for a ceasefire and call for penalties if a ceasefire is not implemented against those countries that do not uh, boycott the Zionist state. They could be sanctioned as well, as well as the state. So, you know, this is within the power of the General Assembly, and this is the power that the General Assembly has to assume. Otherwise, it's just being led around by the Noahs, you know, by the Security Council as well. So, well, Abraham, I think what will be good for us to do for our listeners and viewers will be to write these proposals that you're sharing, write them up and put them in the chat or somehow distribute them among our, our listeners and supporters. Because this mm -hmm. this provides us with some leadership, with some ideas that we can share nationally and, and internationally and develop a consensus that these ideas are viable and, and should be taken up. Put, putting it in print, putting it in writing, somehow sharing it to our viewers and listeners, I think would be very beneficial to the cause of liberation for Palestine. Yes, yes. You know, because this would, you know, make it obvious, you know, that there is popular support for such measures. And who would pick it up? Who would carry the baton into the General Assembly? South Africa. South Africa would be doing this, especially that Minister of Foreign Affairs. I forget her name right now, but she's magnificent. And she's been threatened as well. And her family. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. The, the, the U.S. imperialists, the, the Israelis, other reactionaries are always, are always bullies, carry out assassinations, character, assass character assassinations. So we're just having it hit the floor to sanction South Africa for its, for its uh, ICJ actions. So dearly, we, we definitely need to spread, spread the word. And I hope that our viewers will take this up in their conversations with others and discuss these matters, these ideas that Dr. Weisfeld has presented here today. They're, they're very yeah. important. Yeah, these are our strategic lines of, you know, of, uh, of, um, of, of combat, really, you know, intellectual, you know, thought combat in which we're dealing with, yes. you know, Zionist ideology. And we have to defeat an ideology by showing how their uh, basic, you know, uh, assumptions are false and, and showing how they are actually lying in order to support, you know, such an ideology. We don't have much time left, you know, but I think we've covered, you know, the basis here. And, uh, and with Agreed. that, you know, we can, we can you know, uh, advance the movement, you know, and the movement has to learn how to advance itself and not keep on repeating cliches that may or may not work. But uh, certainly, uh, uh, this is, you know, the, uh, the issue, you know, like, what is our program? The programmatic aspects of the solidarity movement with Palestine is crucial to discuss and to, you know, nail down. And that's what we've done here. Thank you. Well, thank you for providing that leadership, Dr. Weisfeld. And we hope that our uh, viewers will share and like this broadcast, share it with their friends, allies, and respond to some of the ideas that we have promoted this week. And next week, we, we, we will continue this, this conversation with the goal of liberation for Palestine and freedom for all, for all, all, all the oppressed. Right on. Here we go. Okay, we're on our way. Thank you.